Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about vector analysis. Uh, so we're going to go a little bit deeper into our vector map that we started in a previous video. Okay, so vector analysis we use to understand the motion that occurs in a system as a result of the forces acting on it. Um, so we analyze the vectors as a way to analyze the forces that are affecting the movement of the system. So it's how we predict movements and how we understand how forces are behaving. Uh, so a resultant vector is the final vector that represents the sum of all of the forces that acted on the system. Um, so that could be forces that happened at the same time or that happened sequentially, um, but a resultant vector is when we add up a bunch of force vectors, the resultant vector is what we call that total. Uh, vector resolution is a process used to determine the directional component vectors of a single vector. So there are occasions where we want to take a single vector and break it down into its component parts. So there would be a, a vertical and a horizontal component to every vector. Um, and that's especially useful because if we want to add a bunch of vectors together and find like a, a final position, Sometimes the easiest way to do that is mathematically uh, by finding all of the vertical components and all the horizontal components, adding those all together, and that gets us to our, our final location. Um, so we're going to go through some methods here. Uh, vector parallelograms. Um, so that's where we begin with the vector that we're working with here. So in the picture, it says original vector. And we draw a parallelogram around that original vector where the original vector is going from one corner to the opposite corner. Um, so although a parallelogram in general is not always a square or rectangle, in this case where we're drawing a vector parallelogram to find the component vectors, it's always a square or a rectangle. Okay, so your original vector is going at a diagonal across uh, your parallelogram so you're drawing the sides of this parallelogram and so then the component vectors would be the vectors that make up the uh, horizontal and vertical sides of this parallelogram uh, now the important thing here is to make sure that you have your vectors pointing in the correct directions um, so they'll be starting at the same point as the original vector oops let me go back a second here um, and then the directions that they're pointing should be in the same directions as the original vector. Okay, so the component vectors both originate at the same point as the original vector, and then they're going, you know, in the vertical and horizontal directions. Okay, a vector triangle is the exact same thing, except instead of making a parallelogram, you're putting your component vector on the other side of the original vector and forming a triangle instead. Um, so again, pay attention to the direction of your vectors. Um, in this case, they're not all originating at the same point. Uh, so you need to make sure that you have your component vectors pointing in the correct directions. Um, so one of them, one of the components will be originating at the same point as the original vector. And so then it should be pointing away from its origin. Um, but the other component vector, uh, like here we see on the left side, that component vector is not starting at the same side. So you just want to make sure that you have your arrow pointing in the correct direction, which should be the same direction that the original vector is pointing. Okay, vector composition, when we're adding multiple vectors back together again. Um, so vector composition is when two or more force vectors are added. Um, so when we have more than one force acting on a system, which is always the case, um, we can add them together to find the resultant vector, which would be the total amount of force and the direction of that force uh, that's being applied to that system. So to add them together, uh, if we have collinear vectors, those are vectors that have the same line of action. It's very easy to add them together. Um, they might be going in the same or opposite directions, but they have the same line of action. Um, so that means that they're parallel to each other. Um, so if they're collinear, it means they're in exactly the same line. If they're parallel, 
but not collinear means they're going in the same direction. They have the same orientation, but they're not on the exact same line. Uh, so parallel vectors, even if they're not collinear, can still be treated the same way. So to add collinear vectors going in the same directions, so they're both pointed that way, and they're either parallel or collinear, um, all we have to do is just add them together. We stick them, stick one to the end of the other, and that is our total uh, resultant vector is just the length of the two added together. Uh, to add collinear direct vectors that are going in opposite directions, we subtract the smaller one from the larger one to find the difference. Okay, like at what I put in the picture down there. Um, so the direction of the resultant vector will be the direction of the longer vector. Um, so we're going to, to subtract a vector. Again, we just flip it backwards. We flip it the opposite direction. So if we're trying to, if we look at our picture down there and we're adding that smaller vector pointed to the right and the larger vector pointed to the left, um, all we're going to do is flip that smaller vector backwards and subtract it from the larger one. And that difference pointed in the direction of the larger vector is our resultant vector. Okay, so I want to point out that a negative resultant vector is not a negative force. Um, anytime we do the math and we've, we come to the conclusion that we have a negative force, all that means is it's telling us the direction of that force. Okay, the negative or positive of a force is saying what direction that force is going. Um, so a force is a vector quantity, meaning that it has a magnitude or an amount and a specific direction. So that negative or positive is telling us what direction that force is being applied in our context, you know, relative to our uh, scenario. Okay, so the negative sign tells which direction the vector is going, but it's not like we have a, a subtractive force or like a negative force. It's the same force, it's just, is it going this way or is it going this way, negative or positive? Okay, vector parallelograms. Um, so we did a vector parallelogram to break down our original vector into its component parts. Now we're gonna do a vector parallelogram um, to add vectors together. So two original vectors and find the resultant. And again, I apologize, my picture here is covered by my video. Uh, so you, you'll have to look in your course manual. This picture is also there and you can see it in the PowerPoint that'll be posted in Moodle. Um, so for non-collinear vectors, how do we add vectors together when they're not in the same, when they're not parallel or going in the same path? Um, so vectors that are not parallel and do not have the same line of action, um, we can use vector parallelograms as one method. So that's where we use two vectors as the sides of a parallelogram and then draw the resultant vector to bisect the parallelogram. Okay, I'm sorry, I wish you could see my picture here, it would help. Um, but we have two original vectors going in whatever direction they're going. And then just draw the other, you know, put them so that they're both starting at the same place and then draw the other two sides to form a parallelogram. So when you have that parallelogram, you would then draw a vector that bisects it, that goes from where those two original vectors began to the opposite corner. Um, so it's exactly like, our vector parallelogram um, to resolve the vector where we're trying to find its components. Here we're taking components and finding the, the vector um, that, that bisects the parallelogram. So same idea. So we position them with their tails touching. Uh, we wanna keep the direction they're pointing the same and their length the same, but other than that, we can move them around. So we want them to have their tails touching. And then we draw the sides of the parallelogram and draw the resultant vector that goes across. Okay, and then again, we wanna make sure our resultant vector is going in the same direction as the two vectors that we're adding together. So this only works to add two vectors together. If we have more vectors that we wanna add, we would have to do these two at a time and then just keep adding another one to whatever the resultant vector is because we can only do this for two vectors at once. If we have more than one vector or more than two vectors that we want to add together, a more efficient way to do it is with a vector chain. So vector chains are very simple. 
um, just as easy as a vector parallelogram, but this way we can add as many vectors as we want all in one step instead of having to do it again and again and again. Um, so for a vector chain, again, we want to maintain the orientation and the length of the vectors, but otherwise we can move them around. And we would position the vectors tail to head and form a chain. Okay, so you can see in the picture here, I showed the, all the original vectors that I put um, tip to tail, tip to tail, tip to tail. So where one vector ends, the next begins, we form a chain. Then once we have our chain, all we have to do is draw a straight line from the beginning of our chain where we have our tail, or yeah, our first tail, to the end of our chain where we have the last arrow, where we have the last tip. And that line that connects the end to the end is our resultant vector from adding up all of these uh, vectors. So because the, vector, the vectors can be added in any order, we can make the chain in any order. Okay, so if we think about our uh, laws of addition, we can put these vectors in any order we want as long as we maintain their orientation and the length and we're putting them tip to tail, tip to tail, we could put these all in any order we want and we're gonna get the same exact resultant vector when we're done, which is kind of weird if you think about it, but try it out, you know, test it out, make yourself a few vectors and put them all in different orders and you'll see that the resultant vector is going to be the same no matter what order you put them in. Okay, then we can also add vectors trigonometrically. Um, which is an important skill to understand how to do this. Uh, this is going to come up on your treasure map activity and one of your assignments. It might be assignment three, I'm not sure. So uh, this is an important skill to be able to do. So make sure you understand here. And if you don't, that you ask me questions and that uh, we talk about this more. Um, so trigonometric vector resolution. Um, it's incredibly simple. Um, we need to have the coordinates of the vector that we are resolving or composing. Okay, so we need to have coordinates. So if we have polar coordinates, so we have r and theta, then we're going to first start by converting that into Cartesian coordinates. So we'll do, we, we need to use x and y for these methods. Okay, if the vector's tail is located at zero, zero, then its head is located at x, y. So when we talk about the coordinates of a vector and we have x, y coordinates of the vector, those are the coordinates of its head, assuming that its tail is at zero, zero. Okay, the component vectors, again, if we think back to our vector parallelograms, we said that the horizontal and vertical components of that vector, right, the vector's going this way, and then the components are vertical and horizontal to that vector. So if we put that into Cartesian coordinate thinking, then we've got a vector that's going at whatever direction, and its horizontal component will be along the x-axis where y is zero, and its vertical component will be along the y-axis where x is zero. So if we take a vector with Cartesian coordinates, let's make it easy and just say five, five, and we want to find its horizontal component, then we would say that its horizontal component would be five zero, because it's x is five, and then there's no elevation, there's no y is zero, and its um, vertical component would be zero five, because there was no um, movement in the x direction at zero, and then five up in the y direction. Okay, so it's extremely easy um, using trigonometry, it's not even trigonometry really, it's just using math. Um, if we just convert and get our Cartesian coordinates, then the horizontal and vertical components are just going to be those x and y where the opposite is just zero. Okay, so zero five and five zero would be those um, those components. Okay, so then let's say we're adding a whole bunch of vectors and we have their Cartesian coordinates. All we're going to do is find those component vectors of each of those and add up all of the y's because now they're all collinear. We can add up all of the y components, all the vertical components, and add up all of the, the x, all the horizontal components, 
And that gives us our X and Y of our resultant vector for adding up all of those vectors. Okay, so we're just gonna add all of the horizontal component vectors. So add up all of the X, 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 X. Like maybe we came to the conclusion that we had eight zero and five zero and three zero. Then our horizontal component of our resultant vector would be that eight plus five plus three. And then we would do the same thing for the vertical. And then that gives us our X and Y coordinates of our final resultant vector. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, and we'll talk about this again when we go over the highlights for this week. And um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, bye.